you've read the title, Yes, I Quit My Job last month. And I'm gonna explain exactly why I did that. I can't believe I believed everything we had but less We young and naive of me to think she was from your past Silly of me to dream of one day having Hey guys, welcome to my channel so I kind of need to give you guys context because I feel like I can't just come on the internet talking about yeah I quit my job these times you just don't know like how we got here and sort of like the situations that ended up becoming the problem that ended up becoming the reason if that even makes sense so I want to start from the beginning I have got my phone so if I look down it's just to kind of just make sure I don't go on a tangent because one thing about me if you have me on TikTok you already know love to tell a story and I really be getting into the story. So I don't want to go off on a tangent and bore you guys. But I will say, grab yourself some snacks, baby. Grab yourself some snacks. And let's actually get into this video. So let's go all the way back to when I went to university. I went to university. I mean, I could go back even before uni. Because the reason why I went to the uni that I went to... <laughs> either that is a whole story in itself so i went to university and i kind of only went to uni anyway just because i didn't know what i wanted to do if that makes sense like the things that i thought as a child that i wanted to do girl i, I, I woke up one day and i was like mm, really so when i went to university it was more like you know what i finished thick form um I'm not really sure what the vibe is. I'm not really sure if I really, really, really want to get into any kind of work. If I do want to get into work, what kind of work is it? Let me just stay in education. That was basically my logic. I went to UEL, which is University of East London. When I applied for this one university, I applied based off the fact that my um, degree, like grades at the time, were just diabolically bad. Like they were terrible. They were just not... It was like, girl, are you serious or are you unserious? I was basically an unserious candidate. I was like class clown. I was like banter queen. Um, and I just wasn't taking life that serious. Um, even though the same people that was running joke with me were the ones that would go home and revise. But was I going home to revise? Absolutely not. <laughs> so when I applied for this uni, I applied for one subject. I applied for one uni. I said, you know what? Anyone can get into this uni. Let me run with it. I applied um, for youth and community work and social development. Um, that was the course and yeah I even applied for a job after I've really done my UCAS just to kind of like do something within the like the six week holiday. October came I'm now in University of East London I'm living in uh, East London like everything lit everything turned up like do you know what I mean like just living my living my university babe life. Uni was fine, but then it came to February of the following year. So I'm in the same first year of university, which is now I'm in the second semester. A whole madness kicked off. That would be a, definitely a story for another time. If you know, you know. Um, and then I ended up not actually going back to university for the rest of that second semester. But the problem was there was a course that I, in the course that I was on, there was a module and the module was a double module, meaning I had to actually... Um, complete semester one and semester two of this module in order to go on to the second year if that makes sense so technically even though i had extenuating circumstances so they kind of like allowed me to have extra time to like submit things and stuff like that but my head was no longer in university i didn't necessarily want to have a uel on my degree when i finished my like that part of education but I, I didn't give myself any choice because i didn't actually like stick to the plan and actually like do my work and like do well do you know what i mean i didn't aim for the best i didn't aim for the stars <laughs> baby i was on the ground <laughs> i did know this was sort of like a sign and an opportunity for me to like move to a, another university and also a better one i managed to scrape first year like i scraped first year um but in the second year they did say what we're gonna do is the module that you didn't complete that was a double module we're gonna want to add that on to the second year so like because I had extenuating circumstances, so they allowed me to do that. It just means I had more work, basically. Um, but it was during the second year um, where I was just like, I really need to like move to another uni, like for real, for real. We ended up being under Canterbury Christ University, which is in Kent, um, and I finished my degree. As a young, young, young child, I really wanted to be like a paediatrician. Anything to do with like working with really young children, just because I just really liked the reward aspect of like helping like young kids, the youth kind of like were able to have more people helping them. But like when you were really young, 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 you probably like, you need people that are more caring and 
just a bit more sympathetic towards you. And I realized, child, I don't even like blood. Like, I don't even like blood. Like, girl, girl, I don't even like blood. But I'm that, like, we're not doing that. The only next best thing was to kind of work in an environment still with young people, but like more helping them with like education or helping them with like crime and all that kind of stuff. So I got to a point where I really wanted to work with young offenders. So I wanted to work in a young offenders institution or a young offenders based prison with young offenders so that when they come out of prison they don't re-offend. I don't know who I thought I was because have you seen me? Like imagine me in pen. Are you that? <laughs> that was... <laughs> if you actually do this, I was never gonna work. Like I don't know who, why, where. I think I was going me walking up in a jail with them little boys doing the most, them little youths. Anyway, I came to my senses, we thank the Lord because I don't think I don't think that was gonna happen. <laughs> Anywho, I ended up doing four years of university and I think I was in my third year when I got married, I think. Anyway, that's a whole new story for another time, I see? About going, let me get back to my notes because I will just be getting off track. I finished my university degree and now it was the summer before like the next academic year was gonna start, right? Um, bear in mind, when you're in uni, you finish like April, May times anyway. So we've got like a good few months and then the summer comes in and then you go back into uni or you go back into whatever you're gonna go into. During literally from May all the way through summer, I was looking for jobs in the field that I want and the kind of role that I wanted, there was like, I wanted to get into like a mentorship program or I wanted to work with young offenders. My, my degree was gonna allow me to work more with like social care and things like that. I was looking for jobs, bro. It was so hard. It was so long finding jobs. I was like, bro, this is long, yeah? At this point, I might as well just do another uni course. Why is it so difficult for me to find a job within the field that I've just got a whole degree in? Sorry, I just spat at you, like, I'm so sorry. Like, why is it so hard for me to find a job? I also didn't want like this mad gap in employment and have this year or like six months where you're not in work. I don't know, for me, psychologically, it just wasn't gonna be that. I started looking at other jobs within just that, with my degree that I can know I can get into. Keeps me busy, keeps me learning new skills. And I got into a primary school. So I worked with an agency and they put me in a primary school and it was resource based. So basically I was working with young people, like young kids with, with autism. And I'm not gonna lie, that was one of the most rewarding months of my life. I absolutely loved it. It was so nice to be able to like identify just different traits of young people. Cause even autistic kids, bro, they're not all the, they're not all the same. It's not like one generic looking thing. Like all the kids were different. They all had different levels of autism, like different on the spectrum. And it was just like, I don't know, I really enjoyed going into work. It was so different to any kind of work that I had ever done. While you're in uni, you still have to kind of source work and find work because you have to get a certain amount of hours signed off during uni. So I did four years of working on the roads, young people, getting them into youth centers, um, outreach programs. So I was doing a lot of outreach with other practitioners. Like it was lit, it was actually lit. So this was like a whole different thing. And so I literally started in September because during the summer is when I had my meeting, signed up with this agency, they got me work quick. I'm going into this primary school. In the primary school, the, the head of that particular department, she really wanted me to stay on and like literally work directly with the school. But um, it wasn't even long, literally it wasn't even long until um, another job actually came up and it was working in as like a cover teacher in a secondary school. Now me personally, obviously wanting to work in prisons with young offenders, the secondary vibe that was more me because that was more, well, closer to sort of like the age range that I would have preferred to work with. It's easier to communicate. It's just a lot easier to deal with um, young people who are within that age bracket. So for me, that was a bit more, that was making more sense. And plus, again, I've never done cover teaching. Cover teaching me, like never been in the classroom in my life, except when I was actually in the classroom. Bear in mind, I've just come out of uni. So really and truly, I've just come out the classroom. Do you get it? I applied for this job as a cover teacher. So on my first day, boom, no, wait, hold on, pause. Wait, let's go back, right back. I've, I've applied for this job. They said, yeah, come, pull up. So I've come for my interview and on my interview day, please, I'm at the reception of this school. I'm at the reception, I'm standing there. I'm like, yo, um, hi, I'm Amina. I'm here for my thing. They're like, oh my gosh, yes, you're here. Don't worry, I'll just let the, like literally the head of like cover, like know you're here. I said, fine. I was sat there for approximately one minute and 30 seconds. The next minute the woman comes, she's like, right, I mean, I come through. So I've come through, they give me my little visitor's badge and I've, they've taken me straight to a classroom. It was a year seven class and they were, year, yeah, year seven maths. Cool, I've come from the car park. 
I've come from the car park and I'm in a classroom now and I've in, been on the premises for less than less than five minutes like what is this put my bag down I've got this system they pulled up sims if you know if you work in a school or you know the system was <laughs> sims and that's how you take the register I, I don't know what this is sir so I don't know what this is do you know what I mean anyway so I'm literally thinking to myself okay They've literally said, look, you don't really need to do the register too tough, but all you've got to do is press that button if they're here. I'm like, okay, cool, that's no problem. Like, one thing about me, I'm going just, to just pretend. I'm going to just pretend. I'm taking a class. There's a woman sat at the back of the classroom with a notepad and pen. She's just watching me. Every single time I'm over there, she's watching me. If I'm over there, she's watching me. She's just watching me, and every two seconds, she'll go and start writing her notes. I was thinking, oh, you want to write about me? Okay. I remember there was one student in the front of this class, and I feel like, I don't understand why there's always like one student. It's almost like they were trying to set me up, but like not trying to set me up too much, but they were trying to set me up small, small, you know? So I'm in the class. This little this little kid was just like doing the most, but not like doing the most, where it's like you gotta leave the room, but it was just, it was just doing the most. You know and also i can't remember what topic it was but all i do remember is that i don't remember i don't remember being able to do the topic myself i looked at this thing thinking why couldn't you not give me percentages fam why are you not giving me fractions and decimals or something mad and i was thinking i don't even remember the, the, the method even though as a cover teacher you didn't necessarily have to teach but you most definitely had to know what you're doing because you are covering a lesson and if a student needs your help you need to be able to help them like this is part of my interview process i'm in an actual real life classroom with real life children who are real life year seven and they're new as well they've been here for about a month and a bit right at this point so there was this one child who kind of like knew what she was doing if that makes sense board pen go up on the board so she went up on the board and she's trying to figure it out and while she's trying to figure it out i'm figuring it out and i'm like ah, i remember in school like you get it? i was like I actually remember this now because you think I was listening in maths because trigonometry, I don't, I've never had to look at that again. I'm not going to lie to you, I was not listening in maths. Maths? Mm -mm. I was always like scraping maths and they put me in year seven maths. I got the job. So now I'm a cover teacher, right? No cover experience, but to be fair, all you need is a degree in order to be a cover teacher. I've got so many cover teacher stories. So most definitely comment below if you want me to run through some stories of being a cover teacher because chat. All together, I was cover teaching for seven academic years. Child, I don't even know how I survived. I was two years in this particular school, the one that I just told you about my interview process. Then I was five years in the school that I just quit. At one point in this particular school that I was there for two years, I had the privilege of having my own form class. I also had a privilege of teaching as an unqualified teacher in humanities. So I really did have like mad, seriously good experiences. They wanted me to do my actual teaching, um, like my PGCE, um, and they were gonna pay for it. Like there were so many things I know and opportunities I could have probably got from this particular school. But yeah, I kind of knew that the school thing, it wasn't my dream. Like it wasn't like what I wanted to do. I felt like I just fell into it and I, fell into something that I actually enjoyed and I liked doing. I never really thought about being in a teaching environment or any of the kind growing up. So for me to be in a classroom, it was different, but I was still able to implement literally everything that I learned being doing that youth work and also doing outreach. So you could be like literally on the streets of East London and approaching young people and having that having that engagement and having that conversation and trying to persuade people to come into the youth centers and finding out what they want in the area all these kind of things don't happen um for the average person being able to like implement what i learned and the confidence to be able to just speak to anyone chat to anyone bad up anyone whatever it is that i needed to do like i had to be able to just do that on the spot improvise if i need to and then also balance that with professionalism and also balance that with just being in the classroom, period. Do you know what I mean? And it was during that school, when I was in that school is when I fell pregnant with my first daughter. Um, so yeah, I've got a daughter called Rekea. So she was the first one to be born. Um, and yeah, it was during that time. And after I came off paternity leave, I was only there for a few months and then I moved on to the school that I was there for five years. So now we get on to the school that I was at. Um, I absolutely loved it, I absolutely enjoyed it. It was one of my favorite places to be. Just the vibe, like the, even like my line manager at the time, like she was lit, like everyone, like my team, my team were just like, they were cool people. So it was nice when you're working with people that you actually like um, and you're in an environment that you actually do enjoy going to work. Like I was never thinking like, bruh, I'm going to work. Do you know what I mean? Got this job now as a cover teacher in my new school. Um, and 
I'm really enjoying it. It's so much easier for me to get to work because it's closer to my house. Like, just there were so many different perks. And bear in mind, I've got one daughter now, so I've gone down to part time. So like my hours, they were so flexible. Um, I think I did three days. I think I was doing three days at the time. I fell pregnant with my second child, Inaya. And when I went on maternity leave, I gave birth to her and she came five weeks early. So this child literally, again, another story for another time. She just came out of nowhere. I wasn't even ready, didn't even have a blanket. Whilst I was on my maternity leave, I ended up finding out I was pregnant with my third. Girl, that is another story for another time. <laughs> so many stories loading so i've gone from my meeting to discuss my date that i'll be returning to work for me to tell them hi i am pregnant again <laughs> that conversation was hilarious so i came back to work for i think about a term so it was about six weeks and then i was off again for maternity again so now i've returned to work i've got three girls and everything was just totally fine still again flexibility of my hours still enjoying my job i think i enjoyed it even more now because i'm going to work and i can have adult convo because now i've got all these pitney and really i'm doing pepper pig on repeat i know all the pepper pig bars so we fast forward we're running through the years or whatnot um and now Rake is at school, that's fine. And now it was Inaya's turn to finish nursery and go into her first year at big school. I remember that the day that Inaya was going into school was a day that I'm supposed to be scheduled to be at work. What really stressed me out at that point, because I feel like I was starting to suffer low-key, small, small, with like anxious moments. I wouldn't say I had full-on anxiety, but like I had a lot of like anxious moments where I was like, why am I in this position where I have to ask people? Why do I need to get permission to ask you to take my child to school? Do you see what I'm saying? That there were certain things that was happening where I was like, this doesn't even sit right with me. The fact that you can turn around and say, No, sorry. There's no one to cover you, especially where I am the cover teacher. Anyway, in that moment, it was one of them ones where it was quite awkward. It was quite, it was just a bit of a daunting thing to get permission especially when I knew there was a lot of staff that couldn't get that time off. And I was thinking, bro, I'm just a cover. I'm the teacher that covers you lot. Do you get me? I cover you, man. Who's covering me? It was one of them ones where I was like, okay, cool. Like it ended up being my, my husband was off, I think, or put the day off or whatnot um, to take her to her first day at school, at big school. Um, that, even that moment, I kind of then felt very disconnected to my child and her education in that time because with Rakea, for example, I dropped her. To, I had the whole emotional setup, like it was mad. Like the whole thing was emotional. I was bawling, me bawling at the school gate, you know? And I never had that with my second child. And I felt like, although she didn't care, she was gassed, like she was happy, like she's there, like her dad's there or whatnot. For me, it kind of just felt crazy. I'm at work on the day that Inaya has gone at her first day at big school. And I covered this teacher and then another woman from her department had come into my room to say, oh, is everything all right with the cover work? And I was like, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. And then she told me, she's like, oh yeah, did you hear? Such and such isn't in because it's her son's first day at big school. And I was vexed, I was fuming because I was thinking, little did you not know, I'm not, I've missed my first, my child's first day at big school and I'm covering you that's taking your child to their first day at big school. I was raging inside. Again, I feel like it was like this anxiety battle of the reason why I wasn't pushing to go and take, do you get it? Like pushing for that day off. Like I wasn't doing the most because this, there was this kind of like anxious thing. Like, and especially where I've like came back to work, told them I'm pregnant, came back to work for a short time, went and leave again. I just felt like, oh my gosh, I can't like, do you know what I mean? Like there was this really like, it's mad, it was just mad. And I even said to myself, this is the last academic year because I can't be missing my children's milestones like that. I just feel like it wasn't worth it. I just feel like this world is too short. The life that we have is too short for me to be missing these sort of milestones. Like maybe I should, I need to go on a gap because these kids are in their like milestone age year, like that, the time of their year where I feel like I need to be there and kind of like witness certain things and be more involved. There was multiple things that happened within that year again. But I kind of just felt like, I feel like it's that time to kind of like move on now, do something different or whatnot. And also I had another young child who wasn't yet at nursery. Like I've got Kalesa, my last child, and she's not at nursery yet. 
So I'm thinking to myself, hmm, when she goes to nursery, it's going to be harder for me anyway in terms of childcare because my mum used to help out with, um, with childcare because my husband was on shift work. So it was like, I just thought to myself, hmm, I feel like I want to be more available. The last straw, hmm, hmm, the last straw came and then there was a last, last straw and it came within 24 hours apart. In that particular year when Inaya had her first day at big school, we were moving yard we've moved into the house we had a lot of work to do in the house so we was doing a lot of work in the house this is the house that i'm in right now per we've got so much work to do or whatnot and then we finally moved in in the april right so we've moved in and everything's calm like you get me i'm just on my zoom i'm doing my thing i'm being a mother i'm being a housekeeper right being a cook cleaner slave all of that all of that things that mothers do yeah one night i literally when i tell you i cle deep clean my yard downstairs lick the floor like you can lick the floor it was bleached everything was nice so i've cleaned up i was so proud of the way i cleaned because i cleaned like my mum. my mum taught me how to clean so i've cleaned up cleaned up cleaned up cleaned up cleaned up and then i've taken myself to bed i'm sleeping soundly my husband was on night shift my husband gets home in the morning bear in mind but the time that my husband gets home technically i'm supposed to be up getting the kids ready for school but he came in the door and all i can hear is him shouting his mouth off he's like hey, Right, there's ants. Like what? So he's telling me that there's ants downstairs taking over the yard. Downstairs is covered in ants. I'm thinking, my brother, what are you talking about? The first thing I thought was, I bleached the whole of that. Downstairs is clean. Downstairs is clean. Like I, the way I cleaned last night, there's no way I'm cleaning like that again for another six weeks, bro. That was a deep, deep clean. That wasn't even. That was like wiped down the skirting boards. So what do you mean there's ants? I've got up, I've run down the stairs, yeah? I've run down the stairs. I've bust the corner of my corridor, I've run down the stairs. The floor, the floor, my floor, oh, I just feel itchy talking about it. The floor was covered. There was more ants on the floor than the floor, if that makes sense. Like when you see, you just see black. Yeah, you just see black. And they just, the blackness is moving, right? It was all up, listen. I've run upstairs and I said, listen, I can't come downstairs with my toes on this floor because there's ants. I've run back upstairs to go and get my shoes, yeah? I've grabbed any pair of trainers that were out, standing there in the hallway, putting on these trainers. And I don't know what happened, but I was staring in one spot. And then all I can see in my peripheral is this movement. Ah! Why are the ants upstairs? The ants were upstairs near my bedroom door. The ants were on their way to my room. The ants were on the way to my bed. I've started screaming to my husband. Upstairs. Like, I'm screaming it upstairs. Are you dumb? Like, what can we do? All of this was was crazy. I ran, I googled what to do to stop them from coming here, here, here. Cinnamon. I got some cinnamon in the cupboards. Yes, seasoning cupboard, right there, sir. Got my seasoning, sprinkling it all all in the areas that they hadn't got to. So in my room, like I sprinkled it so that there's a barrier, the girls' room, the bathroom, my other, like it was just different, yeah? I've picked up my children, I've put them on the toilet, they've weed, and I've put them in the car. Baby, we're not going to school, what's school? I've rang work, I said, hello, hi, um, I'm not coming in, I've got an ant infestation, I'm not coming into work, sorry, I'm not coming into work, hung up the phone, boom, I've left my message, done. I've taken the kids to my mum's, we've had exterminator, we've had the, all this madness kicking off, my husband there, he's got to now sort that out, you get me, so the exterminator came, and then we've gone to my mum's, blah, 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 I'm trying to keep it very short, because that's a whole story for another time, if you don't want to know the story, comment below, and I'll tell you like, the story in depth, with pictures and all of that. While I'm at my mum's, Bear in mind, we have to leave the house for six hours. The exterminator's got to do what the exterminator's got to do. So we've got to leave the yard for six hours. I'm at my mum's in my pyjamas. My kids are in their pyjamas. I just about cleaned my teeth, I'm sure. I just about cleaned my teeth. Luckily, I had toothbrushes that were at my mum's for my girls to brush their breath because we literally just left as we were. So I got a phone call in the afternoon. I answered the phone, it was my HR. I'm not going to lie, I wasn't feeling the way she was talking. I was about to give her my notice on the phone like i was not a fan of the way i was spoken to that day it was just delusional right i was vexed because i was thinking bro for this dunya for this dunya you want to be mad these times it's not it's not my fault that i'm in this situation it's not a little couple ants and i'm shook like people are scared of spiders no this was a whole ant colony from outside in the mud 
was in my house. I had about a million ants in my house. That no cap, the colony, the whole gang. One of them must have come in and the rest said, yeah, I can't lie, these are sleeping, come roll true. Bear in mind, 24 hours before this, or maybe even 48 hours before this moment, I had found out that my good friend of mine's um, brother had passed away. It was only within that few days they had managed to pattern the funeral, like, because when it comes to Islamic um, deaths and burials, we try to get it done as soon as possible, right? I then got the news on that same day, now that I'm outside of my house, that the funeral's tomorrow. I've just come off the phone to my HR, I'm even mad talking about I need to come into work. Sis, respectfully, how am I supposed to come into I ain't even got a toothbrush with me, I ain't even got cream for my face, and you're telling me to come into work. Again, that was another moment now of pure anxiety. The anxiety, again, was just destroying me and destroying my thoughts and destroying my decisions and it was crazy. I then missed my friend's brother's funeral and it was something I really felt bad about because when that's your friend and they've lost someone as close as a brother or lost a family member, I don't know, it just didn't sit right with me but in that moment that's just what had happened. Like the next day I didn't, I ended up not going to the funeral. Anger that brood was just like, all these things that have happened in the year, I just thought to myself, I'm missing these important things because I work for someone. Do you know what I mean? I'm missing some of the most important times and aspects in my life. Things that I need to be available or a bit more free to make the decisions of, you know what, yeah, yeah, I can juggle and I can come and I can then and then. So that I feel like was the biggest breaking point when it came to knowing that I had to get to myself to a position where I can work for myself. That week, or maybe even the next day, I think when I was at work, I handed in my notice, guys. I actually handed in my notice. So I handed in my notice over a year ago, okay? Um, and then my notice period, I think, was like eight weeks. So it came to around the last day or so of my leave. Like, I'm meant to be leaving, like, tomorrow and the next day kind of vibe. Um, I spoke, like, the head teacher wanted to talk to me and they were just like, you know, how can we keep you on as the cover teacher? I'm not going to lie. I definitely was a, val a valuable asset to the team. Just the way young people are of today and I could definitely manage them. I could definitely manage a classroom. I could definitely, I could definitely do my thing, you know? Without like, just sorting out a whole different contract and I to just do supply. That's literally how I continued to kind of stay in the school thing. But then I was actually more free. I gave myself a certain time period to really knuckle down and work hard with all the things I wanted to work hard in, in order to put myself in a position where I can quit my job and do social media full time. A lot of prayers went into it. And then a lot of grinding, a lot of hard work, a lot of emails, a lot of affiliating myself with an agency, like getting management, being able to like get consistent, get consistent, put effort into my work um, and just be in everyone's face like, hello, hi. From there, the next academic year started as well. I was so, I was more free to pick up my children from school. Like it's so rewarding for me to be able to pick up my children from school, be at the school gate. And I know sometimes people are not in that position or not able to and you have to get someone to do it and you've got to have a child mind or you've got to have a nanny and things like that. But I really wanted to be that mum that was really stuck in with my girls. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I got myself in a position where I can leave for real, for real and just actually get on the grind and start doing what I want to do. One thing I really deeped as well is that you're replaceable. In the seven years of being a cover teacher, there's been many people that have passed away. Staff that was like maybe a bit of a, the older generation, like students that have passed away, like it's been very deep. When you look at it like that, and the fact that once someone passes away, that's maybe one of your staff members, and then next minute the vacancy's up for someone to just replace them, do you know what I mean? Or after a couple months, you don't even hear their name again, like, I'm replaceable, like, the same way I've left now, I'm pretty sure there's a new cover teacher or another cover teacher that's slotted in and that's it. I'm gonna be there for my children, watching them grow. I feel like these are like the most important times of their life. I've got a four year old, I've got a five year old and I've got a seven year old. And yeah, I just really wanted to be there for my children. Uh, and girls are hard work, I'll be so real. So that's literally why and how I quit my job, how we got to this position just a month ago, just before I handed in my notice.
few weeks before that, again, someone that I know had passed away. And I was just like, you know what? Life, the way life works and the way life comes at you fast, if you don't make decisions that are for you and just know that if you really want to do it and you put your pure reliance into God, there's nothing really that you can't do. Do you know what I mean? So I'm really at that point now where I'm like, everything is going to be a risk because you're going to be tested in this life with multiple things, whether it be your health, whether it be your, your wealth, whether it be that. There's going to be so many things that you're going to be tested with. And... Um, I'm pretty sure as a parent as well, you'll probably be tested with your children. The other thing is, like, I feel like we don't, we're not heavy on taking risks. We're comfortable. It was at least about three years that I was saying to my husband, oh, you know what, I want to quit. I want to quit my job. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this instead. I just want to work for me. I want to work on my own terms. I want to, you know, and I feel like being in a nine to five, quote unquote, kind of prevents you from being able to do that naturally that's that's how we got here guys that is literally how we got here um this channel would definitely be full of story times and being able to sit down with you guys in a lot of depth that if you have me on tiktok you would have already seen multiple stories because over on tiktok i definitely sit down and tell stories i give you guys a bit of modest fashion how to make things modest um and then over on instagram you get more of the aesthetic side you get more of the the, the beauty you have if you are new to to me and my vibe um and you're feeling it then subscribe if not cool no worries um and i'll see the rest of you guys in my next video